If you don't count the controversial 2009 season they had to forfeit due to an insurance violation, the last time the Sioux Falls Storm failed to advance to a league championship game was in 2003. This year, that seems like a possibility, though, with Sioux Falls just 4-3 and three against teams in the playoff field. Now, the only one they didn't play in the regular season was Tucson, and they met for the first time ever today in the opening round of the IFL playoffs, the Sugar Skulls. Got to respect the logo, and you had to respect their game early on. They, they led 6-0. Storm changed that in the first quarter. Kalen Campbell with a two-yard run. It's 7-6, first of two touchdowns for him. And that was a score after a low-scoring first quarter. Now, after Tucson misses a field goal, that opens the door for the Storm to extend the lead. That's Lorenzo Brown on the fourth and goal from the two. He takes a shot, but gets in. It's 13 to six. The Sugar Skulls answer Jake Medlock with a 31 yard bomb to Jared Brown. And Tucson goes in front 14 to 13. On the ensuing Sioux Falls possession, they go back to Brown. And that's a good decision for Curtis Riggs. This time he'll score on a five yard run. He would score four touchdown runs on the day. As the Storm go up 20 to 14, he ran for 52 yards. Final seconds of the half, though, Tucson with the last word. They march from their own one and go ahead on Medlock's second touchdown pass to Brown. He had 273 yards and six touchdowns in this game. They were up by one and a half, but Brown and the Storm bounce back. 12-yard pass to Damian Ford for the touchdown. That puts Sioux Falls ahead for good. They get the victory, 50 to 47. Brown particularly good in a week where he had to deal with all the rumors about whether Chris Dixon might be taking his job. He played well. You know, our offensive line played really well tonight. They did a great job up front, um, gave him time, and then he did a nice job picking and choosing and then taking off and running. A lot of guys coming in and out, and um, it just makes us battle tested, man. And uh, I mean, it's kind of exciting for our fans and, you know, give me a little heart palpitations, but <laughs> it's all good, though. I mean, we come out on top, and uh, that's what we, that's what we practice and that's what we play for. Just working together as a team, you know, trusting the process and following the plan, man, everybody buying in and understanding one game at a time. And they were rocking out to Iron Man by Ozzy Osbourne. Gotta love that. Well, with that, the Storm are on to the United Conference Championship game, and it'll be a rematch of last year's last minute United Bowl loss as the Storm head back to Des Moines to take on the Barnstormers. This year they split in the regular season with the Storm most recently losing two weeks ago. 55-43 in Des Moines kickoff on Saturday at 7 o'clock. Winner of that game gets the winner of the intense conference championship between Nebraska and Arizona in the United Bowl. Though we're still about 12 weeks away from the kickoff of the 2019 Minnesota Vikings season, it's been easy to look ahead since many of their players have spent the last few weeks in Sioux Falls at charity events, which of course included Kyle Rudolph, whom the team re-signed after initially looking like they might cut or trade him. It's continuing a trend for Minnesota that's seen them re-sign most all of their key players. This despite last year's disappointing 8-7-1 campaign. Though there have been other changes to the coaching staff with the addition of Gary Kubiak and new full-time offensive coordinator Kevin Stefanski, the players we've spoken to have made it clear that they believe keeping the continuity will help the Vikings move closer to their championship goals. Obviously, we have a new offense, and we have, we got some things we got to do, things that we got to clean up, things we got to learn. Um, but you know, we're, we're all we're all doing it together, and uh, we we know we know how great we can be. I feel like we have a championship culture. Um, we have guys that have bought into things that we want to do as a football team, and now we just have to continue to continue to get better. Um, throughout this off season and now we'll get a little bit of time off and come back in training camp ready to work. It's a win now mentality and uh, we know we have a lot of good players and some of those players, you know, potentially could have left this off season and they didn't and we've retained them and um, so we're we're all pretty pretty pumped to be together. The Vikings report to training camp in Egan in a little over a month and hold their first practice on July 26th. Whether it's playing down in the more pitching-friendly Lewis and Clark Park or the loss of RBI leader Adrian Nieto to the Miami Marlins organization, the Sioux Falls Canaries offense has been offensive in two losses to the Explorers, managing just one run and dropping them back into a first-place Southern Division tie with the X's. Series finale and battle for first place this afternoon in Sioux Falls, in Sioux City rather. Things getting off to a good start for the Birds. They had a man on first. Alex Boshears, though, ends that rally with a strikeout. We head to the top of the second. Where the Canary Bats finally start to come alive as some raindrops start to fall. Clint Coulter, he almost leaves the yard. Instead, he'll settle for a triple to dead center field off the wall. It scores Ale Lago, and it's one to nothing. Couple batters later, Jordan Ebert with a blast the other way. This one won't get out, but it'll get to the wall and score two more on the double. It's three nothing. Nothing can stop them. 
except Mother Nature. The rain started to fall a lot heavier. The tarp came on the field, and they would suspend play in this one. Three nothing Canaries in the second inning. They will pick this one up on July 19th when they go back to Sioux City. The Canaries are back home tomorrow for the start of a seven-game homestand against Fargo Moorhead and Milwaukee. The Twins wrapping up a four-game set in KC, looking to take three out of four. Both teams wearing Negro League throwback uniforms. And it was all Kansas City, especially in the third inning off Michael Pineda. Alex Gordon, the longtime Royal, with an RBI double. That makes it two to nothing KC. And a few batters later, it's Hunter Dozier. Exit stage left. Michael Pineda didn't really pitch bad. He just had one really bad inning. It was five nothing KC, the lone bright spot for the Twins. Eddie Rosario would hit his 20th home run of the season. That's the only run the Twins would manage, though, as they fall six to one. Also, congrats to Hannah Green. She won the Women's PGA Championship at Hazeltine, went wire to wire to pick up the victory. We're back in one moment.